We're nuns. I'm on a boat full of them. Novices, anyway, is what they tell me. Out of habit. Me too, I think. I haven't had sex in a month. But I was making polite chat when I asked what they all did for a living. The novices had been noisy and full of themselves, and I was party to it by proximity. It was only our accents that separated us thighs together, sat on the floor, because the Dublin ferry was so busy that all the seats had been given up to the infirm. It was a choppy crossing, but we were young. Nuns, though. They shut me down with that shocker, so I contented myself with a can of beer. One of them wanted a quieter word. She waited for the attention to tangent itself before she isolated me. What's the matter? She asks. Not much. I lift the urn and show her. Ash. No matter, really. Just my dad. I'm drunk, and she knows. He needs an introduction, I say, as I pat the urn to make her feel more included. <laughs> I'm Fiona, pleased to meet you, she says to the urn. This is Joe. Are you going to drink all of those? She points out the case of Stella I had purchased from the duty-free, nestled between my knees. Not possible. Would you like one? Mm, she shakes. I offer what I am cradling then to her friends then. You? Her girlfriends seem offended that I've entered into their auras once more. But they take a beer each anyway. <laughs> Most of us swig then. Don't you think you've had enough? Fiona says to me. Not yet. <laughs> How would you know? I wouldn't. When do you stop? When I do. Does it hurt? Doesn't everything? Jesus heals. He's there for you, she says. I don't know if she's having me on. He's there for you, I say. For all. How would you know? Because he is. Just be Scots, I say. Yes, she sighs. I sigh. I've been godless since I was eight. Have a beer. We've just come from a choir competition, she says brightly. How was that, I ask. We won. Thanks for asking. I see a unity in them. Then they're a big toothed grin of a team. You should be celebrating, I say. I am, she says. It doesn't look like it to me. You don't have to get. Come with me, she says, and takes my hand. So I go with her. I have to take my dad up the carpeted stair onto the top deck. She holds the urn whilst I pull at the windstuck leaden door. Then she passes him back like a rugby ball. <laughs> we look out for a while. We look out. The whole world is dark silver. Then, there, in the howl, and staring at the shine on the waves, she kisses me. I don't know why. Where are you going? Fiona asked me as I stagger back. I'm taking him home. That's not what I mean, she says, and grabs hold of me again. I put the urn down between my feet so that I can free my hands, and she kisses me again. We promise each other some more sunrises as we see the land we look for. She glows in the beauty of the morning. It must feel good to be going home to be long. It's my first time here in years. I suddenly feel like a tourist in a familiar place that has grown without me. I break away from her and apologize. Her eyes cloud. We just stand there in our, in our own wake. It's awkward. She shifts from foot to foot. It was nice meeting you, she says. She goes back down to find her coven as we dock. I give everyone some space, the last on deck again, and then I see that all the beer is gone. <laughs> they weren't nuns. <laughs> My dad rolls about the ship in his new plastic house, laughing his lid off.